Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. And I got another project to share with you. Uh, this beautiful little boat is getting packed up and shipped off to the no, new owner. But before I shipped it out, I wanted to share it with you, uh, give you a bit of an overview on its background, how it was produced and what it looks like inside and outside. So without any further delay, let's take a look at what we've got to work with here. Well, as you can see, this is not a typical RC submarine. It is very steampunkish in design, very, very unique, and I absolutely adore it. As a little bit of a background, uh, the boat itself was envisioned, designed by a gentleman by the name of Peter Pohl, and I believe he's out of the UK. Uh, and Peter put these files up for sale on Turbo Squid. So if that's something that you're interested in, head on over there, you can download the files. Now, having said all that, those files are in no way whatsoever remotely able to be used as they are for 3D printing. And it took weeks and weeks of work to convert them into watertight STL files that I could eventually build this boat into. And this boat was built for my own personal use. I'm not kidding this up. That's all Peter's uh, you know, intellectual property. This is definitely a one-off boat. So that's a bit of a background to it. Having said all that, let's take a look at all of the wonderful detail of the boat and then we'll go into the functionality of it. All right, let's get up close and personal with this boat that Peter called the Argo Hippocamp. And you can see that name on this custom stand that I built. Let's start at the bow. Why don't we do that? Look at this absolutely gorgeous detail uh, of the Hippocamp on the bow of the boat there. Now in the original design, uh, there was a, like a net cutter that went up over the top, but I elected not to put that on the boat. Didn't think it needed it. Um, the entire boat was 3D printed in sections out of PLA plastic and uh, a lot of these really small detail parts like the hatches were outsourced uh, in printing to a company called Shapeways that has much better and more expensive printers than I do. Um, got a lot of really neat little window details. All of the portholes, uh, these are actually grommets and uh, I basically put those down on the work surface and filled them with resin and I heaped them up a little bit to make a clear dome. So that worked out really, really cool there. Some brass inserts for the deck grating and in the top of the conning tower there. And then we got uh, what I assume was supposed to have been the steam powered you know, generation plant uh, on the back of the boat with these really, really cool, um, you know, steam funnels that come out of the top. This is one of my favorite parts of the boat. This is like a little explorer submarine that comes right out uh, with the idea being, of course, that uh, the boat would be submerged and the uh, captain or uh, crew could get into this, um, take off and explore independent of the boat. Um, a little magnet in the bottom there that mates to a magnet in that pit. And that just gets held in there magnetically. Um, LED lighting all throughout, and you'll see a little bit more of that when we get inside. as uh, a really bright uh, stern light and fore light in the front. And this is something that, uh, again, departed a little bit from the original design. This is how I engineered all of the uh, linkages for the boat. You can see how they swivel. They're symmetrical on both sides. I just think it adds a lot of really cool detail to the boat to have some really intricate linkages there. It's a uh, seven-bladed scimitar propeller from Robosh that I elected to go with. Um, and then just looking on the bottom, we got some drain holes that I did some brass tubing inserts into. So that's kind of the, uh, the exterior of the boat. Um, let's take a look at the inside. 
access to the interior of the boat is, uh, is really, really easy. Basically just slide the uh, upper hull forward. I'm going to try and do that one-handed. There we go. And it just lifts right off. So let's take a look at the inside there. You can see all of the LED lights that are in there, as well as the snorkel for the fully functional ballast system. And that's what that gray tube is with the quick disconnect. Um, I got a waterproof connector there. Not only does that attach to the watertight cylinder that you can see below so that it has operational lighting while underway, but you can also attach a separate nine volt battery so that you can display this model with its LED lighting. Uh, quick look on the interior of the boat. So you can see all the sections that everything was printed out in. Got our main uh, drive coupler in here, universal shaft, really, really free spinning, which is very important for RC submarines. We've got our three main linkages. This is for our bow planes right here. And then uh, let's see, what's this middle one here? If I can get my finger in. Oh, there's our rear dive planes. And of course that leaves our rudder. And you can see I've got these little bent brass pieces in there. And I did that to ensure a solid connection to the watertight cylinder uh, mating parts for these magnetic couplers. And you'll see how those go on here momentarily. To install the, uh, the watertight cylinder, and this is uh, it right here, we got twin 800 or twin thousand uh, milliamp hour batteries, so a two amp power system. There's our main power switch and our LED lighting lead, our ballast system with our snorkel intake there, and then our main engine compartment with our ballast system, pump, as well as uh, you know, electronic speed controller, servos, and uh, automatic pitch controller. So this is a very comprehensive little uh, watertight cylinder. All right, as I said, installation of the watertight cylinder is a very straightforward affair. Let's take this magnetic clamp out. And that's a, a really solid uh, connection there. This is just gonna go to the side. And the thing you've got to note here is that um, there is a little orienting hole in the bottom of the ballast tank that lines up with this pin. And what we're gonna do is uh, slip the front in first, and then we are going to drop the back in, keeping that um, universal joint kind of in place and lined up there. I'm just gonna give it a little wiggle until that pin lines up, drop it in place, and the whole thing is now nested firmly inside the model. We'll grab our magnetic clamp. That locks it down. Can't move now. And uh, basically we're just gonna take our rear linkages one by one and line them up with the appropriate outputs on the cylinder. And that's it. So what we want to do is take these little brass clips that I've got in there, I'll pull it forward, and then you just press it over the, uh, the mating linkage right there. And that just kind of rests there, keeps everything locked in place so that there is no way for that linkage to become separated. Now we're just going to make sure that our air tubes don't get trapped. We're going to take our receiver antenna and just run that down the length of the entire boat. Just like that. Take the upper hull. You connect the lead for the snorkel intake right there. Screw in the adapter for your LED lights. Drop the lid on and you are ready to go. The other thing to note is that there is a float that basically goes on top of the cylinder, just like this. Fits on the back, it's some additional flotation to get the trim perfect. 
Some final stats on this boat before I get it boxed up for the customer. Uh, it's got a four and a half inch beam and it is 25 inches in overall length. So it's a very, very convenient boat to just kind of tuck up under your arm, bring to the pond. And of course, with the setup of this stern with the rudder and dive planes directly behind the propeller, you get some exceptionally responsive control for the boat both in turning and in pitch control. So this is a beautiful little boat. It handles very, very well in the water. And I've got a little bit of footage that I'll show you directly after this so you can see it in my pool. Now that I've showed you everything about the boat, I am gonna pack it up safely for the customer and uh, we will get it shipped off to him. Let me show you the transport case that I have for it and then how I'll be boxing up the model itself safely for transport. So what we're looking at here is a Plano rifle case that I got off of Amazon. And these actually work really, really well for the transport and storage of RC submarines. This particular one cost about $200, um, which in my mind, given the state of protection that it'll offer your boat is well worth it from an investment perspective. Got some solid foam on the inside that I've custom cut specifically for this submarine so that nothing moves around in it. Let's take a look. So here you can see all of the custom cutouts for the boat and for the cylinder. Just as an aside there, I advise never ever to ship a watertight cylinder inside a submarine because inevitably the transport company will throw the boat on its end, the cylinder will break loose and then act like a gigantic piston inside the boat, smashing forward, back, forward and back until there's nothing left but crumbs. You can see also the cutout for the custom stand and for the radio system in here. So I am actually going to pack up the watertight cylinder inside this case but the boat is going to be shipped separately in this box and the reason for that is that you know as good as this packaging is uh, in my experience unless there is a significant buffer around the perimeter of the box the boat will get smashed FedEx, UPS, USPS they are all the same they will literally take that case and throw it 10 feet off of the tailgate of their truck onto the ground. And no matter how good a job you do, it will end up broken. So I find it much better, safer, and more successful to ship uh, in a standard cardboard box with tons and tons of buffer in there. And you can see I've got lots of bubble wrap prepped as well as this custom expanding foam. Well, there you go, everyone. That was the Argo Hippocamp steampunk submarine. I hope you enjoyed this little preview of it. I'm going to leave you with some video of it in my pool when it was undergoing her maiden voyage. Hope you enjoy that as well. Again, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com. Appreciate you checking out my video. We'll catch you next time.